Welcome everyone to a new video. This time I decided to gather up all my ideas and pick one by chance. I was very lucky to pick a total since that is what I really wanted to make. For the designing process I like to keep things really loose with just a short description to send myself in the right direction. Maybe I will try to design the shell as if it is a whirlpool. With that being said, let's try to make the design. For this project, I have decided to split the turtle into separate parts, since I do not have any blocks of wood large enough to make something like this out of one solid piece. This is the log I will use to make the turtle's body. As you can see, there is a rotten branch running straight through it. I'm hoping that it will become more solid further into the log, so that it can be used for the shell. Time to reveal whether or not the log is suitable. As you can see, there are cracks running quite deeply into the wood from the sides. I will not be able to avoid all the cracks, but try to find the best area for the design to go. I like the colors of the log a lot, and after further inspection, the rotten branch does seem to have enough strength to be a part of the turkey. That is a big plus, since it has a lot of beautiful wood grain surrounding it. I always try to make the sculpture I'm working on as big as the part of wood allows me to. There will be quite a lot of weight to this turtle, which makes me a little bit anxious thinking about the tentacle base I'm planning to make. But uh, technical challenges is after all something I do enjoy. I like to take a moment to welcome my new subscribers and express gratitude towards the support you show me. And if this is the first time you see my content, please consider subscribing if you like what you have seen so far. I don't show this often in my videos, but I have a bunch of reference photos when I'm sketching the guidelines for my carvings. It would be very hard for me to do this without that. And a project is not 100% mine without a fail like this. Fun fact, this happened three times and I gave up one day and went skiing out of frustration. Sometimes when frustration runs too hot, I guess it is the right thing to do. At this point I'm getting quite excited about the wood grain structure of the shell. It has a very wavy pattern which fits perfectly with the subject. This does pose a challenge for me when it comes to how much detail I can add onto it without stealing away the natural shine of the wooden pattern. I always try to give the way the natural wood looks first priority. Carving the shell was quite straightforward. The most important things I wanted to keep in mind was the curves of the shell and the direction of the flat surfaces where the limbs would be glued onto. I want them to have different angles just like in the design I made. It will give the sculpture a lot more life and personality, which is always something I'm digging deep to find. For very fine sanding I'm using some cheap sanding drums with 200 grit on my Dremel. I just wanted to mention that since I find it really helpful and since people have asked me about it. I made two shell designs I was quite happy about. The one that was the riskiest is the whirlpool, and I felt like that was the right decision to go for. Well, after seeing how the whirlpool design turned out, I'm happy I made the decision. 
Now it is time to make the rim of the turtle shell. And for that part, I will make it quite simple with the rounded off edges. I was very careful not to add too many waves onto the whirlpool, and as you can see I carved three of them. I eventually ended up removing one, since it kind of ruined the whirlpool look, in my opinion. Time to try to make a cool design for the flippers. So maybe I went too large here, but let's just give it a go and see how it ends up looking. Here are some handmade wooden pendants I sell in my shop as a way to support my art journey. I also planned to announce that I would sell prints in this video, but I'm having a bit of problems setting up my printer. So for now I will be adding these originals in my shop. Link is in the description. Thank you for listening. Now back to the weirdest turtle in the universe. It does hurt a little bit having to use an entire log for the flippers, since it actually is intended for an entire new sculpture. I will never get to know what the log could have been turned into, as a separate sculpture. And I do want to reveal that for my next sculpture, I do want to create a horizontal facing wolf head tapering into some kind of awesome shapes from the neck and backwards. I'm also having a lot of fun reading your suggestions and comments in general, so feel free to leave one if you have something on your mind. I do read all the comments. Fortunately, there was no cracks in the flippers that would become a problem later on. I must say that looking back at this project, I was not able to make the curves in them as dramatic as I planned for. There is something about trying to make every part of a sculpture have life in it, and from my experience that is really what makes the result both interesting and pleasing to look at. So it's really something I strive to accomplish. I'm going for a fairly simple design on the flippers with smooth curvy waves, mainly to complement the shell design I was going for. I'm not sure if you can tell, but the wood grain in the flippers look really nice. So now that I have made the, the flippers and the body, it's time to sand them to completion. Then I will assemble them, and I'm going to add a rod to this one and onto the socket. And I'm sure I'm going to be able to make a nice glue up, but uh, it's probably going to be a lot of frustration, but that's part of the game. <laughs> so I was concerned about this crack expanding, and decided to try for the first time in my life to add some bowtie inlays to stabilize them. The log I will be working with for my next product has a huge crack running all the way down one of the sides, and I might just try to do the same thing to that as well. This is my first video in 2024, and I have not really thought of any goals for this year. I would like to be able to go through with one project every month, and I would really like to kind of be a little bit more business oriented and get things going. I'm very fortunate to have been invited to a local art establishment, where they want me to display some sculptures and even sell them. As we speak, I'm preparing the autumn month sculpture for this, and I will come with an update about how things are going in my future videos. With the bow tie inlays successfully laid in, it is time to start thinking about the turtle's head. This is wood from the same log as the flippers. Fortunately, there was still a large enough portion without cracks that would be suitable to make the head out of. I'm not sure why I sketched the design so loosely onto the wood, and it did give me a bit of a headache when it came to figuring out all the shapes. I guess I was in a hurry somehow, which really is not good when I'm trying to do my best work. It is not the amount of things I'm able to create that will give me the most success, I believe. It is probably a lot more important to focus on quality. Alright, it's looking more like a sea monster at the moment than a turtle's head, but have some patience and I will get there hopefully. I have decided to keep the details on the head as low as possible, and mainly focus on having the eyes be the center of attention. 
I'm going for a pleased and happy look in the turtle's face. I succeeded quite well with this when you look at the turtle from the side, but the front view has more of a natural turtle expression to it. I find it tricky with all my sculptures to try to match the emotions from both the front and the side view. I am overall happy with how the head turned out. I spent a lot of time trying to get it the way I wanted it to look. And now it is time to commit turtle murder. But do not worry, I have a body waiting for the turtle's head. Here's the plan. The hardest part will not be to make the pins fit, but to make the surfaces of the parts flat. I was pretty sure I would not be able to fully accomplish this, and that is why I decided to go for epoxy instead of wood glue. And uh, oops, a crack formed as I drilled the holes. It is not too big of a deal, but I will keep it in mind for the future, and perhaps carve the hole with a dremel instead when it's close to an edge to prevent it from happening again. I tried to flatten the surfaces with hand sanding and with a planer, but after some failed attempts I tried to use a belt sander. It seemed to do the trick. It was hard though to hold each piece at a certain angle so that the whole surface would be even. Finding a solution made me quite relieved since I had been walking around for days not being sure how to solve this problem. pieces seem to be working quite well together. Maybe the head and the flippers are a little bit too large. I will let you be the judge of that. Now a moment I have been waiting for, gluing all the parts together. So fingers crossed that this unorthodox way of clamping the pieces together gives a nice and strong bond. The pins I made was really helpful to hold it all together. Without them the bond would be less strong and I would probably have a lot of problems preventing the pieces from just slipping away from each other. And as you can see I really had to get creative making sure the force of the clamping was at the right direction. Quite a milestone, the first time I get to see all the pieces glued together. I must admit that I did lose a bit of life from the original design I had, and I will make a small note to myself to rely more on the spirit I'm able to initially capture in the original ID. To me it is always the first iteration of something that has the most whimsical and natural flow to it. I guess it comes from a place where I feel more free to just throw whatever I'm thinking about onto the paper, instead of altering an already made up ID. I find it very helpful to do some reflection after every project. For this, just like many other creations, I think I should have devoted a little bit more time designing to make sure I found a very good match between each piece of the build. It is kind of interesting for me to think that there is an optimal design flowing in the cosmos, which I have to do my best to reveal. What is left to do on the turtle, other than oiling it, is figuring out a pretty simple design for the bottom of the shell. A special thanks to everyone who has watched the entire video so far. The support I receive is without a doubt where I get the majority of my motivation from, and I'm already excited about what I'm going to show you in my next video. And I mentioned earlier that it was going to be a wolf, but now I'm thinking more about a hawk. Well, my mind changes quickly, so it will be fun to see what I end up creating. So it is time to make the base. I'm gonna just take two of these boards, glue them together to make them this thick and uh, paint it black. So I'm having a bit of a problem and that is that I don't have material to make the tentacles in the base which was in the design. And I've tried to come up with a nice replacement but I just cannot find it yet. 
So with that in mind, I have decided to postpone the sculpture space and go ahead and oil the turtle for now. And the plan is to get the material I need and maybe make a small segment in another video where I show you the tentacle and the whole result of this build. So now let's oil the sculpture and see how it ends up looking. So I have a bit of a love-hate relationship with the result of this build, mainly because the head and the body ended up having a bit of a mismatch in coloration, which kind of makes this turtle look like a Franken turtle. But this project did become very unique compared to my other ones, which is something I always try to achieve, so I'm very happy about that. So thank you all for watching and thank you so much to my patrons for the support. I'm looking forward to see what the rest of the year has in store for my art journey and I hope to see you in my next video. And now it is time to reveal the newly discovered turtle species, which I have no idea what to call, but anyway, here it is.